people. Um, and before I start, I'd like you all to think if that most of you have children, probably, or you know children. So think if you have a 10-year-old boy, he's got an ACL injury, what would you like to do? Surgery or non-surgery? I will talk through uh, our studies, and I will talk about the rehabilitation that we do, um, and try to make some recommendations. And uh, make no mistakes, I'm here to uh, put up the case for normal treatment for most of these children. Uh, because the clinical challenge uh, was also addressed by the previous uh, speaker, <coughs> we know that uh, from surgical treatment there is a risk of growth disturbances. Uh, we do not know much about the graft development during growth and uh, the child's adherence to rehabilitation after ACL reconstruction can be difficult in 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old children. And then on the other side, we know that there is a poss possibility of an increased risk of early OA if the children have secondary injuries after non-operative treatment, particularly to the menisci. So what are we looking at? This is the knee, uh, an MRI in the child. You can see the open growth plates here in tibia and in uh, femur. Here the patella, and this is a beautiful picture of uh, an intact ACL, the way we want it to be. This boy is 11 year, years old at the time of this injury, and this is his other knee, where he has had an ACL reconstruction. You can see it's been performed with a transphysio uh, technique with a drill hole all the way through. And this is the dangerous part where something can happen to the uh, epiphysis. And you can also see that it's very hard to get an anatomic reconstruction. These two ligaments are not very similar. And that's part of the problem, because <coughs> there are no, no studies telling us what happens to the graft during growth. Uh, we know that in healthy children, the angle between the ACL and the tibia becomes significantly larger with increasing age during skeletal growth. Meaning that if we put in uh, a graft into the young knee, we need it to develop uh, in coordination with the knee altogether. And there is one study from Great Britain where they have followed children with ACL after ACL reconstructions, and they saw that the graft increases in length but not in width during growth. Meaning that if you put a thin ACL graft into a 10-year-old boy, he will probably have a thin ACL when he's um, adult. What's the magnitude of the problem? Is uh, children's ACL injuries a big issue? Uh, well, it's not. These are numbers from the Norwegian Knee uh, Ligament Registry, where all ACL reconstructions are registered. Uh, this axis, these are the number of ACL injuries per year, and these are the age groups. And you can see in the age group 10 to 14, the purple bar here is for 2012, and it was just below 50 reconstructions performed. And then if we break this down a bit more, uh, these are total numbers from 2004 until 2012. In total, 305 ACL reconstructions in the age group 10 to 14 years old. There's been only three 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 60, 13-year-olds, and 230, 14-year-olds. So these children, the youngest, are very rare, and at least in Norway, they uh, seldom have surgical treatment. So this is what kids are doing. And this is how they have their ACL injuries, at least in Norway these days. Ten years ago, they, we had a lot of patients with broken wrists, because then everyone was doing snowboarding. If you go to the slopes now, there are no kids on snowboards anymore. All of them are on twin tip skis, and they're jumping and they're crashing. So now they have knee injuries instead. I will talk a bit about this paper, <coughs> uh, which was part of my PhD. Uh, um, program. It was published in the Journal of Orthopedic Sports Physical Therapy last year, and some of the figur figures I'll show here will they appear in the paper, so if you want them, just find the paper. <coughs> Additionally, we published this one, which is, I think, even more important, because um, <coughs> it's published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery in America, 2012, and the title is also the conclusion the current evidence for treatment of ACL injuries in children is low. 
And this was a systematic review where we re reviewed the literature on children with ACL injuries. And the conclusion was twofold. The methodological quality in the literature on treatment of skeletally immature children with ACL injury using a Coleman methodolo methodologic score, that's a very different word, was very low. Meaning that most studies on children are small re retrospective cohort studies and it's a lot of expert op opinions out there. And particularly, there was a critical lack of adequately sized prospective studies with valid outcome measurements and documentation of rehabilitation. So when I'm now to speak about rehabilitation of children, this, this is not evidence-based medicine, this is my or our opinion based on our experience and also a little bit on the literature. So back to this paper, how do we recommend uh, treatment of children? We found 31 papers to include in the systematic review uh, of those, 31, there were only four on non-operative treatment. There were 19 on transphysial or adult ACL reconstructions. And there were eight papers on physical phys sparing reconstructions. But you can also see that there is a big variation within these eight papers. There were 10 different surgical techniques. So it's very difficult to do research and to, do, to conclude on the results. So the main points from rehab rehabilitation, children are not small adults, so you'll probably hear that many times today. Uh, additionally, additionally, there are research and experience telling us that children seem to heal and adapt quicker than adolescents and adults. And from my view, this is a crucial part of getting this right. With non-operative treatment, but also after surgery, you need to bring the parents into the rehab team not as supervisors or trainers for their children, but they need to be participating. So in the home exercises, I always say, you have to do this with your father or with your mother. He or she has to do the same exercises as you together. Always works. And the parents do it because they are worried about the children. Imagine yourself, 10-year-old boy, ACL injury, serious thing. You want to contribute. And then sending them back to sport, we have to do proper <laughs> really good neuromuscular training. Do you think we can send people back to sport playing football if this is the, what they've been doing? Standing on one leg balancing? No, you know. So we have to do more. They have to do hopping, landings, one leg, single leg, sideways, rotations. And we have to give the, give the children just as good rehabilitation as you would have given to any Olympic athlete. They need the same exercises, the, next, the same challenges, and they will go for it. And it's more fun. Fun is important with children. I'd also like to some of the results that because we have been doing now this treatment algorithm for some years. Um, and the results were published uh, this year in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in May. Uh, this is the paper where we report the functional outcomes. So how are these children doing when we treat them primarily non-operatively? Uh, these are children who had their ACL injury before they were 13 years old. And it's a prospective cohort study where we follow them for two years. To be included in the study, the children had to have a traumatic ACL injury. And that's a ligament injury, not avulsion injuries. Sustained at, an, at age 12 years and younger. Intrasubstance ACL rupture. We did a an, an functional assessment once a year. Uh, then the patients and their parents filled out patient-related outcome measurements, COOS IKDC and COOS ADLS. Those are not very good for children. They are made and uh, validated for adults, but not for children. Some of the questions here is like, uh, how's your knee like when you're carrying groceries from the store? So that's not very valid for children. These were the ones we had when we t started in 2006. Uh, but there are two very good questionnaires available now. It's called the COOS Child and the I PD IKDC, which should be used in children. Then we also have done uh, the four single leg hop tests and isokinetic muscle strength measurements once a year. The material, the children, it was 46 skeletally immature children. 30 of them were boys, 16 were girls. They were on average 11 years when they had their injury with a minimum of seven and maximum 12.9. 15 right and 30 left knees, and there's one bilateral injury. So one boy, he tore his left, I think, ACL when he was eight, and the right when he was nine. And he's still non-operated, and he's playing handball. 
So what do Norwegian children do to tear their ACLs? Well, they do alpine skiing and soccer. Some others, trampoline, playground, accidents, cycling, handball, motocross, skateboarding, cross-country skiing, ski jumping, but it's alpine skiing, and within these alpine skiers, about approximately half of them are twin-tip uh, skiers, hopping and crashing. This is one of the kids from the study. For those of you who are young enough and have good eyes, you can see that he's got a brace here on his left knee. So he's doing, he's one of the best in his age group in Norway, uh, doing full time. Uh, he's going to an alpine skiing school uh, without his ACL and he's performing very good. It's now two years since his injury. He's 12 now. What about surgical treatment? Because uh, I know and you know not all of them are good. But then a two years follow up with this approach, 36 of them were still non operated. Three of these had a repaired medial meniscus and one had a debridement of the medial meniscus. The three was repaired without ACL reconstruction because the surgeon decided they were too young. Ten has had uh, ACL reconstruction and in addition one medial and one lateral meniscus repair, one medial and one lateral partial meniscectomy and one of the children had an injury to the nerve and the artery because they drilled through the tibia. Uh, so he's got some uh, uh, muscle palsy under his foot. He's got a stable knee, but he's got a bad foot. So the conclusion from this study was that 78% of the children continued with non-operative treatment over two years after injury. Uh, the performance-based functional test showed symmetrical knee function throughout two years follow-up. 91% maintained par participation in pivoting sports and or uh, physical activity in school. And but also 38% changed their main activity level from one to two. Level one activities uh, are the pivoting sports, football, handball, uh, floorball, which is called in Norway. Level two is uh, running, skiing, alpine skiing. So if you don't do surgery, some of them will decrease their activity level. But you also know that some, probably around the same amount, will reduce their activity level if they have surgery as well. I'll be quick with the uh, fourth paper, because <coughs> this is what the orthopedic surgeons are telling us. If you don't do surgery, they will have meniscus injuries. Well, do they? We don't know, because there are no good studies. But we have done the study. The first 40 children <coughs> were included. We did bilateral MRIs uh, two times. They were analyzed by two independent experienced radiologists. This is the flow chart. They had injury, diagnostic MRI, a second MRI, and a third MRI. The follow-up here is almost four years, and the conclusion is that the accumulative incidence, so how many did get a new injury to the meniscus, was low in our eyes, approximately 20%. And of the 41 knees in this study, eight of them required meniscus surgery throughout the follow-up. I was also asked to talk about prevention. That's very difficult. And prevention, there's been one good study trying to prevent ACL injuries in children from Di Stefano in the American Journal of Sports Medicine uh, 2011. Their conclusion was that prevention of knee injuries with a structured warm-up program is not as successful in children as it is in adolescents. We don't know why, but it's, mo it's more difficult with children. What we do, we tell the parents and the coaches to look into this website, which is called skadefri.no. In English, that will be injuryfree.no. Uh, where they can click on their sport, come to the next slide where there are, there are exercises and tips for prevention of injuries. And I think maybe Meyer said a good thing in 2007, as with all high-risk sports, the answer for prevention may lie in increased wisdom and responsibility of both the skier and the parent to ensure an adequate level of ability, self-control and simply common sense as they venture out on the slopes. So maybe. Good prevention will be teaching children how to behave on the slopes <coughs> and not build the big jumps so big. We are currently trying to establish a new study, uh, a European study where we can ha have more children included. It's called the ESCA Pediatric ACL Monitoring Initiative. Uh, we'll be uh, more about that at the ESCA conference in Amsterdam in May. If you are interested, please be there. 
So the take home message is for me <coughs> is that structured active rehabilitation with a physical therapist before deciding to do surgery or not is advisable. We advise to do functional home exercises, be creative. These are children, they have to have fun when they're training. Non-operative treatment is a valid option for most children. And we should also have in mind and inform the patient that the reduced participation in level one activities may be necessary for some children. And we also say that modified activities does not mean a passive lifestyle. So even though you can't continue football, there are lots of other things important and fun to do, even though we have a knee injury. Thank you.